It's so interesting, right? It used to be like 30 years ago, you just stayed in your same job for 25 years. Employers really have to shift their thinking. People are not staying put as much as they were. Welcome to Ms. Mojo. And today, we're counting down our picks for the top 10 things you should never say to millennials. We have a digital pacifier for ourselves. For this list, we'll be looking at the most notable phrases the members of Generation Y won't take kindly to hearing. Are you a millennial? If so, which of these things do you hate being told the most? Let us know in the comments. Number 10. You're always on your phone. How do they spend their time? They come home from school and they're on their devices. A whole generation is more anxious, more fragile, more depressed. Millennials grew up as a digital shift occurred in society, so they understandably tend to be pretty tech savvy. But to accuse them of being unable to disconnect from their phones, well, that's just not fair and not true. Sure, most of them have significant online presences, but the members of this generation also know how to have meaningful offline interactions. When did you get Snapchat? What grade? Fifth. What's more, it's not right to assume that the things they're doing while on their phones aren't important. These devices allow folks to get in touch with loved ones who may be far away, check the news in real time, foster community, and so much more. Give me your iPhone now. The nougat things. I have all my contacts in there. Okay, if you don't give me your phone right now, then I'm gonna have to take away your phone and your computer. Jesus Christ, That's I need it. my computer to do That's homework. It. No phone, no computer. Number nine, therapy is useless. When, when you came in today, I asked you how the past week had been and you said it was weird. Yeah, so? So, apart from this letter arriving, did anything else happen during the week that was weird? There was a time when therapy was seen as taboo, but the last thing we need to do is perpetuate that stigma today. After all, mental health was largely brushed under the rug for far too long. But these days, many millennials have psychologists, counselors, or psychiatrists that they regularly visit to help them process their feelings. So you're saying I should get over my sadness by getting really sad? Why would I do that? so I can be miserable and realize the person I love the most is never, ever coming back? Yes, because I think that would help you heal. The fact that they're willing to take that time to care for themselves is something everyone should be applauding. Not trying to invalidate by calling it useless. Maybe you've tried therapy and genuinely found that it wasn't right for you, or maybe you aren't interested in taking that step. Either way, there's no reason to get down on those it helps. So why have you come to the session? Uh, it was a birthday present for my father. Is that a joke? No. Number eight, side parts suck. So now you're falling in love. Let me go now. The feeling's starting me up. Zoomers have decided that the middle part is where it's at. They've therefore largely shunned the side part and the millennials who sport it on the daily. But back in the 2000s, this Gen Y hairdo was all the rage. Anybody who was anybody was parting their hair to one side. In fact, doing the opposite was considered uncool. So it's easy to understand why millennials don't want to change course now. And hey, maybe there's still hope for this hairstyle. It's out with the old and in with the new. Goodbye clouds of gray, hello skies of blue. After all, Gen Z Euphoria star Sydney Sweeney, who was born in 1997 on the cusp of the generation change, has been seen rocking it. In conclusion, leave the side part alone. Number seven, Harry Potter houses are stupid. No? Please. Well, if you're sure, better be Gryffindor! <laughs> Which Hogwarts house do you belong in? Gryffindor, Ravenclaw, Hufflepuff, or Slytherin? If you're a millennial, we bet you answered that question without missing a beat. If you're a Zoomer who thinks it's all silly, hear us out. The Harry Potter books and movies were formative for many members of Gen Y. Figuring out which of the Hogwarts houses best suits one's personality is a big part of the fan experience, and it's fun. When I call your name, you will come forth. I shall place the sorting hat on your head, and you will be sorted into your houses. Who didn't want to take the sorting hat for a spin? Many millennials found comfort in the wizarding world with Harry, Hermione, and Ron, and have an attachment of sorts to the franchise. Let them have their joy. <laughs> Number six. 
Number six, stop changing jobs. I have seen that I will be a photographer. Photographer? Mm. Yeah. Julie used the rest of the study loan on camera and optic. Det är viktigt att du finner ut av detta ordentligt. Da. Baby boomers likely remember finding work after graduating in their early 20s and staying there until retirement. But the landscape has changed and millennials tend to switch jobs more. Telling them to simply stop doing so misses the point on a few different levels. The members of this generation seem less likely to put up with toxic or rigid working conditions. And they aren't afraid to look elsewhere if their talents aren't being appreciated or fairly compensated. This Fidelity survey showed that 60% of nearly 60% want work-life balance over money. Right. So you think everyone's just going for the money, but really people are saying, and by the way, this is true of other generations too, they're saying, no, we want work-life balance, we want the quality of the work we do, what we do at work, that's more important than money these days. Many also want a career that speaks to them and fuels their passions. And it can take kissing a few metaphorical frogs before getting it right. Aren't those all good things? So, what can I f get you? Is there anywhere you don't work? They're called jobs, something a f all like you would know anything about. Number five, you're responsible for the downfall of American industries. Millennials are actually killing the napkin industry. Yeah, I do apologize. We just shouldn't have to wipe our faces. Well, if we're killing them, I, do we need it? Generation Y has been accused of destroying just about any industry you could think of, from casual dining to brick and mortar stores to cheese. Yep, you heard that last one right. But you know what they say? Correlation doesn't always equal causation. Look, we're not saying certain businesses aren't struggling, but why do people love to pin that on the millennials in their lives, as if they're evil masterminds? There's no malicious plan to bring these enterprises down. The reality is that people's habits aren't set in stone. Soon we'll just be a memory. In fact, someone, some foolish person, will probably think it's a tribute to this city. The way it keeps changing on you, or the way you can never count on it, or something. I know because that's the sort of thing I'm always saying, but the truth is, I'm heartbroken. And as populations prioritize things like sustainable shopping and healthy eating, companies must pivot. So let's not play the blame game. Number four, why aren't you having kids? My parents know I don't want kids. They've known pretty much my whole life. I've kind of prepped them already, like don't ask because you know the answer. Childless millennials are increasingly common. A slew of factors are thought to play into this reality. The threat of climate change, economic instability, public health crises, take your pick. But the big question we have is this. Why do people feel inclined to grill the members of this generation about why they're not going the parenthood route? I think there's this assumption that as a woman, you should primarily be having children, be getting married, and you're somehow denying someone or even denying yourself something. Yeah. Deciding whether or not to bring a baby into the world is a deeply personal choice. From the issues we previously named to fertility struggles to just not wanting kids, there are many reasons why someone would remain childless. At the end of the day, it's really none of anybody else's business. I think a lot of kids have a crippling, crippling student debt, and yeah. they aren't finding jobs in this economy, and they're thinking, how am I going to bring another life into, into my world when I can't even pay for myself? Number three, you're too sensitive. You're going to hear me say today on the show, I think we are too sensitive. I mean, it's like you don't want to tell a ball joke around me. I mean, come on. You don't, you don't think I don't know I'm bald? What millennial hasn't heard this before? Maybe you've even been called a snowflake who's too easily offended. Members of older generations seem to love talking about how they just dealt with whatever life threw at them without complaining. Those same people tend to accuse Gen Y folks of being too sensitive, often pointing to their advocacy for various social issues. But just because someone is calling out problematic behavior doesn't mean they're overly emotional. If anything, it's a sign of strength to stand up for human rights and demand that your life and those of others be respected and valued. If you ask us, it's high time this insult gets retired. We are all witnesses to this injustice. We see it all and we will not stop until the world sees it too. Yeah! Number two, your generation is lazy and entitled. As far as widespread and harmful generalizations about millennials go, this one is high up there. 
And it's not really based on any kind of objective truth. Rather, it comes from a series of assumptions about what the Gen Y cohort is like. It's said that they don't work hard, that they think the world owes them something, and so on. But that's unfair. Maybe they do things differently at the office, using the technology at their disposal to streamline operations. Maybe they speak up when they see something they can improve. It boggles my mind that no one has a notebook out. You guys are focused on writing this gibberish. Maybe that's helpful, maybe it's not. But I guarantee you what we're saying is helpful. Guys, we're looking for a bug, not a password. They're different things. Maybe they demand flexibility because they value having a work-life balance. None of that makes them lazy or entitled, though. It makes them resourceful and well-rounded. I go here. You, you go where? Harvard. Law school. You got into Harvard Law? What, like it's hard? Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Avocado toasts and lattes are the reason you can't afford a house. I never buy a frappe latte blah, 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 woof, 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 for $2.50. That's such a waste of money. I drink coffee one cup every morning. It costs about 18 cents to make it, and I invest the rest. Raise your hand if you're a millennial who's ever felt personally victimized by the housing market. Now raise your hand if you've been told you're bad at saving money. You see where we're going with this? Buying a house is something many millennials can't afford to do, and people love to blame their spending habits. More specifically, they love blaming their supposed affinity for avocado toasts and lattes. I'd like to try a cappuccino. Please. But you get a medium coffee, cream to sugars. That's what you get. That's what everyone gets. Every day, always. But the fact is that there are real issues making it exceedingly difficult to join the homeowners club. Do the words recession, pandemic, or student loan debt ring a bell? Combine that with rising inflation, low wages, and astronomical property prices, and it's no wonder many stay home or rent. Need we say more? And then that happens. What is that? That's America's housing market. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.